I don't have a personality. That's a statement I've seen making the rounds recently on the internet, and after watching some videos and reading a few posts about it, I found some advice that seems like it could be helpful, but I think most of them kind of miss the mark and take the wrong approach in dealing with the statement, so I'd like to give my input on it. I'm gonna start off by saying, you have a personality. It came free with your existence. Nobody lacks a personality, unless you're a psychopath who stole the personality from Patrick Bateman, but let's operate on the assumption that you're not. And if we want to get pretentious about it, then we can be like, well, actually, your personality is dependent upon genes and your upbringing, so you must have one. But we know the people that say they don't have a personality probably don't mean they literally don't have one at all. What they probably mean to say is, I feel like I'm boring and unrelatable, and I have difficulty interacting with other people. Now, this may be true, but here's where a lot of other people go wrong in trying to help. Of course, they have good intentions, but they usually resort to giving advice like, be more outgoing or the least helpful phrase ever, just be yourself. These are statements that seem helpful, but basically mean nothing. Another bit of advice I've heard is to be more extroverted. This is also terrible advice, because not only does it reinforce the idea that the problem lies with the person themselves, but it also completely misrepresents what it means to be extroverted. In fact, let's go ahead and go over what it means to be introverted and extroverted, because this is actually really important, and nobody seems to understand what they actually mean. Put simply, extroverts are people who feel energized by social interactions, and usually find being alone very draining and lonely. On the other side of that, introverts are people who are energized by being alone, enjoy having a lot of time to themselves, and are drained by social interactions. Sounds about right so far, but now I'm gonna blow your mind here. You can be an extrovert and suck at talking to people. You can be an introvert and be great at talking to people. You can be an extrovert with crippling social anxiety and you can be an introvert with complete self-confidence. It's really more like a spectrum, and even if you're, say, an extrovert, you still may have introverted tendencies and vice versa. I know people generally portray introverts as these social awkward geeks who stay in their bedrooms all day watching anime and listening to My Chemical Romance, just as they portray extroverts as these master socializers that are out partying 24-7. But these are both just stereotypes. Of course, extroverts do tend to manifest more outgoing, talkative, energetic behavior, and introverts more reflective and reserved behavior, but these aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, a lot of, if not most, introverts really enjoy talking to people and socializing, although they may gravitate towards more laid-back people that don't take as much energy out of them. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get to the actual point of the video. So let's start with the statement, I'm boring and unrelatable. You may think that, but I highly doubt that's actually true. As with a lot of these posts I've seen, they usually say, I have no interests, or everything is boring, etc. First off, and I hate to bring this up because I feel like this is thrown around a bit too easily these days, but that's like, a pretty big sign of depression, and I have seen a lot of these posts mention suicidal thoughts, so if that's something you're experiencing, that's an entirely different issue and you should either talk to someone or seek professional help. But we're gonna say this isn't the case. So you have no interests, huh? Everything's boring? Have you considered that that may be your fault? That sounds a bit harsh, but... Are you actively trying to find things to be interested in, or are you just living a mundane life and doing the same things every day? I'd be willing to bet that you have a lot of interests that you don't even know about. For the longest time, I had no idea what I was interested in. Nothing was entertaining, games were getting boring, and I never really wanted to do anything. But then I took a few art classes, tried a few new things, started making videos, toying around with music, and uh, <coughs> started playing D&D, and now I've got too many interests to even find the time for. So what I'm saying is, if you really have no interests, and whatever you're doing is getting boring, then maybe it's time to try something new. Also, I swear if you say you're getting bored of games and the only games you play are Call of Duty and Minecraft, I'm gonna rip you a new one. Try some new games, listen to new music, go somewhere new, don't let yourself become stagnant. You have interests. And you know what? It might take you a long time to find them. That may kinda suck, but it's true. Just hold out, try new things, and stay hopeful. Think of the last time you were really happy and enjoying yourself. I'm talking absolutely lost on whatever you were doing. Try doing that, or maybe just something related to that. What about that activity did you enjoy? Did you like drawing? Well then maybe you like having a creative outlet, so try to be creative in other ways. Another thing that people usually say is, I'm boring to talk to, or I don't know what to say in a conversation. Really? You're boring? Says who, you? I mean I guess there are people who may have called you boring or something along those lines, but people that talk to you like that shouldn't really be listened to anyway. And consider this, is it actually your fault? Maybe the person you're talking to isn't giving you any opportunities to give any input. 
Are they only talking about themselves or something that only they're interested in? Are they even giving you any chances to talk? Or are they just the type of person that will keep talking forever unless you interrupt them? And tying back in with what I said about extroverts earlier, just because some people can talk a lot and with a lot of confidence does not mean that they're good at talking. Just saying words doesn't really make good conversation. The people in these posts also usually mention that they don't talk much in conversation, usually saying yes, no, or other short phrases. And this point is going to really surprise some of you, but to that I say, so what? Who says you have to talk a lot? I personally don't talk much in my day-to-day -day life. I usually resort to short responses and minimal talking. The thing is, I'm not going to talk if I don't have anything to talk about. I don't really see a point in talking just to fill space, but maybe that's just me. I pretty often get into conversations where I just listen and don't say anything besides maybe a yep, uh-huh, right. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Don't feel pressure to contribute to a conversation. There's no minimum word count, you're not getting graded. Just talk when you feel like it. And if you don't feel like it, then don't talk. I can guarantee you'll feel a lot more comfortable talking when you let the words naturally come out, rather than just reaching for words that aren't there because you feel like you've been quiet too long. Chances are, if any of you are like this, then you've probably become someone's personal therapist at some point, because people really like having someone that'll listen to them. I can't tell you how much emotional baggage people dumped on me when I was in high school. I talk like an old man, I graduated high school last year, but you get the point. If you genuinely listen to people when they talk to you, then you're already miles ahead of people that just talk a lot, and then wait for you to finish talking so that they can keep talking. Also, here's a bonus to not talking much. If you're a generally quiet person that doesn't talk much, and you come up with a really good joke, then you're gonna blow people away when they least expect it. Of course, that being said, don't try to force a joke. It just doesn't work. Here's another point that's been indoctrinated into people due to the weird push for people to be quote-unquote extroverted. The problem of, I'm not energetic slash hyper, or I'm dry and monotone. I would like to say that as an introvert, I absolutely love these types of people. I feel like I can talk to them forever without getting physically exhausted. And if you want to talk about monotone, do I need to say anything else? Of course there are some honorable mentions too, like I'm not cool or I'm awkward. I'll touch on awkward later because that's a beast of its own. But once again I say, so what? Nobody's asking you to be energetic. Hopefully. And who cares if you're monotone? Are you just saying this because you know someone that is energetic and expressive? And you've put that person on a pedestal as someone to try and mimic? If anyone you've ever interacted with has actually criticized you for something like this, Screw them. Find someone new to hang around. Because guess what? That's called being laid back, or even chill, which is a personality trait by the way. And not being very expressive is also completely normal. It doesn't mean you have no emotion, or you're emotionally numb. And being monotone, your voice doesn't fluctuate the way you think it should, get a hold of yourself. I'm kind of starting to realize that a lot of people that think something is wrong with them probably just have deep-rooted insecurities from high school, or probably are still in high school. Listen, the highly energetic, social, expressive, popular, witty caricature is not something that you should strive for or compare yourself to. Like I've said, I can't stand energetic people, and I would rather fake my death than go to a party. That's just how I am. That's my personality. In fact, I feel like I would get along really well with some of the people in these posts. But now on to the biggest beast. I'm awkward. Great. That means you have social awareness which is a fantastic foundation for conversational skills. Now this may be a controversial opinion, but being awkward is great. Being reserved is great. With how some people engage in conversation, I wish more people were awkward. I love being awkward. I bathe in awkwardness. Here's the thing. Awkwardness stems from self-awareness. Maybe a little bit too much self-awareness. You know, to the point where you can't even interact in a conversation because you're so nervous about coming off the wrong way or saying something stupid. But here's what I want you to do. Take that awkwardness, and hold on to it forever. The moment you start being fully confident in what you say and talking with no regards to how people will perceive you, it's all downhill from there. In all seriousness though, there's nothing bad about being awkward. And guess what? The people you're talking to probably feel just as nervous or awkward themselves, and you don't even notice because you're too worried about yourself. Anytime you talk to someone, there's gonna be a bit of awkwardness. Unless it's someone you're really comfortable with. That's another reason I personally let other people hold up the conversation for a bit if I'm talking to someone new. It can really help take some pressure off of you if the other person shows a bit of their personality, their mood, and gives you something to work off of. Of course, if you're talking to another awkward person, get ready to do some heavy lifting yourself or get stuck in a standstill. Another way to deal with awkwardness is just to whip it out for everyone to see. I don't know why everyone treats awkwardness as some illegitimate child that needs to be kept a secret, 
everyone is feeling it and bringing it up or making a joke about it can help to relieve some of the tension and make sure that everyone in the conversation is on a level playing field. Some people may disagree, and there are some times where you should at least pretend to be confident, but in a casual setting I think this is fine, as it also comes off as really genuine and sincere. Unfortunately for all of you that want to overcome awkwardness, the only way to actually do that is by talking to people. And you know what? You may actually suck at talking, in which case, start practicing. It's gonna be grueling, but you'll get better eventually. I don't even get nervous anymore when the waitress takes my order, depending on how attractive she is. I know that sounds crazy, but it's possible. It's important to realize that a lot of the factors that make you feel nervous or awkward just don't matter. That waitress isn't going to ever see you again, so who cares if you stammer your order out and spill your drink on yourself? At the very least, you'll give her a funny story to tell. But now the real meat of this video, and maybe the hardest nut to swallow, is that some people just don't mesh. If you really have a hard time talking to someone, or maybe even a group of people, then maybe you should just spare yourself the stress and move on. If you aren't energetic, then find some friends that aren't energetic. Find friends that are awkward, boring, unexpressive, unenthusiastic. Unless you don't like that, I guess. And if the people you want to be around are good and caring people, I doubt they're going to shun or judge you for being a bit awkward or not knowing what to say. And you know, there's a person for every person. So keep your head up and you'll eventually find someone that can relate to you. This is what being yourself actually means. It doesn't mean, oh yeah, you can be friends with anyone if you just be yourself. And I hate to break it to you, but not everyone's gonna like you. Some people just don't mix, no matter how hard you try. So don't beat yourself up because you aren't like Brad on the football team, or you don't have a witty joke for every possible situation. And I actually have some great news for you too. Your personality is constantly changing. It could be gradual day-to-day -day changes, or maybe you just watched a new movie with Ryan Gosling playing the main character. And building off of that, there's no reason to feel bad about stealing your personality from a fictional character. That's how personalities work. They're influenced by the events and people you encounter in your life, even if fictional. Of course, this has limits. Don't base your personality on some shonen anime protagonist. Pro tip, nobody in anime acts like a real person. Please do not copy the personality of an anime character. Sheesh. Anyway, I know that society has pushed this stupid view that people should be outgoing, energetic, and involved, but it's just not true. And a lot of less social and introverted people get criticized for being quiet or keeping to themselves, which is one of the main reasons posts like this exist. I'm gonna go on kind of a rant here. I can't tell you how many times people have told me I'm not great at talking or that I'm awkward or dry or boring, usually by some extroverted person who isn't capable of keeping their mouth shut for 5 seconds and loves to be the center of attention. In fact, a lot of extroverted people treat introverted people as if they have something wrong with them because they like to be by themselves and do their own thing. They treat it like they're doing you a favor, like you're some sad little loser that would be so much happier if you acted like them and were more outgoing. Then you try to tell them that you're actually pretty happy, and that you don't want to get blasted drunk at a party and have an orgy every day of the week. And then their head explodes. Like, I'm not by myself because I don't have a choice. I'm by myself because I want to be by myself. I went to the orientation day for my college, and had several people tell me that if I didn't join a club or some group, that I was going to have a boring college life. I can think of nothing more agonizing than having to join a club or a frat house. So don't let anyone pressure you into changing, and be confident in yourself to the point that you can brush off those types of people. Now that being said, don't take this as introverts are so much superior and smarter in every way and extroverts are stupid. I know you guys like to have something to hold above other people, but unfortunately, introverts and extroverts are equally stupid. And you know what else? I'm sure a lot of you out there think you're introverted, when you may actually be extroverted, or vice versa. Here's a little piece of advice, trying to categorize yourself isn't really a great idea, although finding out which way you lean could be helpful in understanding yourself better. One suggestion I may have for extroverts out there is to keep in mind that not everybody has the same social goals that you do, so telling other people to be more outgoing or social isn't really that helpful. In fact, the worst thing you can do for an introvert is force them to be social or put them in a social situation. Think of it like this. For introverts, being around other people is like working out, and it can really make them physically tired. They need their time to rest and process everything, just like relaxing after getting back from the gym. Now imagine you take someone who just got back from the gym, and drag them back for another full workout. That's how introverts feel when you force them to hang out. And this is why they can actually get really irritated and short at times. You may have caught them while they were still recharging. I'm definitely guilty of this. So when an introvert says no, they really mean it. Anyway, this video has a lot of words in it. 
hopefully I provided some more insight on this topic instead of just giving you hollow advice like be yourself or be more outgoing. Do whatever you want to do. I didn't really give any straightforward advice, but maybe it helped you feel more confident in yourself. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any feedback or thought of something I didn't mention that you think could be helpful. I hope you all have a great day and feel at least a bit more hopeful.